Welcome back to the next video, everybody. Let's get into this. I know it's been a little while. My personal life's been pretty wild lately. Um, we're back on the horse, at least theoretically. Big announcement, though. So my FLT in-person class is about to end pretty soon. After that, I'm going to take the notes from the course and put them up in my public Discord for experts to look at. I'm going to take criticism and feedback. I'm going to fix up the notes, let that marinate publicly on my website, probably for the spring semester, and then I'm going to run the course publicly on YouTube, maybe like Patreon funded, during the summer or sometime close to that. So if you're interested in being a part of any of that <clears throat> in any capacity, the link to the public Discord will be in the description of this video. Let's get to it. So we're proving Ramakrishna's theorem. We stated the theorem last time. We'll remind ourselves about the theorem before we get started. Um, this is a theorem on the flat deformation functor and its representability from Ramakrishna's thesis. So here's the result. So theorem 14.4.1, you know, take a coefficient ring A and send it to the set of all flat deformations of a given representation row bar to that ring A. Okay, this is a functor from uh, C hats above to the category of sets. We defined this category last video. The theorem is this is actually a subfunctor of du over row bar. It's actually a functor. I was calling it a functor. You have to prove that it is, and it is. Okay, and what is du row bar here? This is just like the universal deformation functor. Okay, so more precisely, what do we have to show? If you give me a morphism phi from A to B in this category C hat sub O, then du row bar of phi of d flat row bar of A sits inside d flat row bar of B. Okay, so we have functoriality here. Now, if row bar has trivial centralizer, not, and, and I'll emphasize, this is the case, like if row bar is absolutely irreducible, this happens, okay? But this is more general than that, okay? Now, most of the time this is applied, ro, our row bar will be absolutely irreducible, but why not prove the strongest result you can? Okay, so if row bar has trivial centralizer, then this functor is representable. There's a representing ring, which we call R flat row bar, and it's in C hat O still, okay? Uh, by universal properties, there should be a map from ru row bar to r flat row bar, right? And the final part of the theorem is that this map is surjective. Okay, in particular, this is a quotient of this. Okay, so let's get into the proof. Uh, if you recall, row bar, I mean, okay, row bar was set up last video. Go check that video out. There's a set of assumptions on row bar. Okay, one of them is that row bar is flat. Since row bar is flat, we see that d flat row bar of k, which is our residue field, is really just the singleton set row bar, okay? By theorem 14.3.3 from a previous video, the property of a finite GP module being flat is preserved under passage to sub-representations, quotients, and finite direct sums. What that means is that it follows from the first proposition of chapter 8 way back in the day, section 25, and the corollary from section 23 uh, that d flat row bar is a subfunctor of du row bar, and that when row bar is absolutely irreducible, d flat row bar is represented by a quotient ring of r u row bar. Okay, that's kind of what we wanted to prove, right? Now, the only thing is we're not actually done yet because uh, we have to expand this condition to allow for trivial centralizer instead of just absolute irreducibility. Okay, but in the case where row bar is absolutely irreducible, this, is, this theorem is sort of just like an amalgamation of results we already know. Um, the other thing, too, here is by chapter 8, section 25, and corollary from section 23, I mean of the CSS textbook, okay? Although all of this information was also covered in my playlist, so you can just go check out my chapter 8 playlist, and all this stuff is there, too. Okay, let's piggyback. Let's assume row bar has trivial centralizer now, but it's not necessarily absolutely irreducible. If we can just show that all lifts of row bar have trivial centralizer, then we can still use the methods of chapter 8 to conclude... Uh, the reason for this is if you go back and look at the proofs of the main results in, in, in Mazur's chapter in the Chapter 8 playlist, the only property of residual absolute irreducibility that we ever use is that its lifts have trivial centralizer. We never fully use absolute irreducibility of the lifts anywhere. Okay, So it suffices to check that all lifts of Robar have trivial centralizer. Okay. In other words, it suffices to prove that if row bar from G to GLN of K is a representation of a group G with trivial centralizer, and K is really just any field, then for any complete Noetherian local ring A with residue field K and any lift rho from G to GLN of A of row bar, row bar has trivial centralizer. Okay, so this is actually kind of just a much more general statement than what we are, we are really seeking to prove in the first place, but it's certainly enough to prove this given what we know already. As a matter of fact, if you pass to the limit here, 
um, if you pass to the limit, like if you write A as a limit of Artinian qu um, quotients, you can reduce to the case in which A is just a local Artinian ring. And then you can induct on the length of A as an A module, in the case of length one being our original hypothesis on row bar, uh, that row bar has trivial centralizer. Okay, so we can assume A is in a local Artinian ring with a limiting argument. So let's finish. Now it's like kind of easy, actually. So to this end, um, let x in the maximal ideal of A just be a non-zero element. By induction, rho mod x has trivial centralizer. Right? We're just applying the induction hypothesis there. Let C be an n by n matrix over A uh, that commutes with the action of rho. Okay, so a consequence of, of this you can check easily is just that C is equivalent to A mod x m n a for some a and a. If you replace C by C plus A without loss of generality, you can actually just assume that C is x C prime for some C prime and m and a. So these are just stupid little calculations for you to do. Okay, now remember C centralizes rho. Okay, and so C because of this relationship here, C prime has to centralize rho mod the annihilator of x. But then by the induction hypothesis and the fact that the annihilator of x is actually a proper subset of A, C prime is congruent to a scalar matrix mod the annihilator of x. Okay, in other words, C equals xc prime is a scalar matrix. That's what we're trying to prove though. Okay, and so there's the proof of Ramakrishna's theorem. Uh, what's left to do? I mean, we to actually completely finish the proof of FLT modulo some like extremely hard theorems lurking in the background like Carriol and Langlands Tunnel. Uh, the whole point of all this, why did we even establish this theorem? We were supposed to utilize results on cohomology to understand the flat subring of the universal deformation rings we've been working with this whole time, right? The problem is that we don't actually know that H1 flat is a functor, okay? So we'll accomplish this task in the next videos, and then we'll push toward the main result of the chapter, which is Ramakrishna's result that actually concretely describes the universal flat deformation ring associated to Robar. I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.